we know that you are a teacher that came, that comes from God. For no man can do these miracles that does good except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is the spirit. Marvelous not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Thank you, Lord. Seven again. Marvelous not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. May the Lord have a blessing on this already in this word. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you for that, Minister Curtis. I appreciate you so much for coming this moment here. Give us a song or two. This week has been a big week. A lot of things have been going on this week. And not, I know not just for me, but for you also. Also, a big week for our international body, of Pentecostal Assembly of the World, that, uh, as some of you should have seen, or possibly some of you, I'm certainly you on our Facebook page, Live of South Pentecostal Church Facebook page, uh, we did our very best to stream both of those services uh, for our international body to stream on our Facebook page. So if you want to go back and see some of the activities or some of the things that were being done, uh, at the international level of our organization, you're able to do that by going back and just leaping back through our Facebook page. Those services are still there. But that happened on Wednesday, I think Wednesday was the beginning of, the, of those services. Saturday, of course, was the last day of that, of that great meeting. And it was a great meeting. It really Amen. was a good meeting. Again, uh, we are having to find and figure out a way to stay connected even during a time in our history where we're having to stay apart because of the pandemic. Uh, but, but God is blessing us and we're continuing on. Even this church, this church, we've had to make some adjustments in how we do things and, and, and in terms of just trying to make sure that people are safe and that we can continue to, to bless the Lord. In fact, we have been able, the Lord has blessed us, yes, he has. Uh, and we have been able to still come together and be together in worship, and I thank God for that. But uh, that, that was the beginning of Wednesday. Wednesday was also significant because some of us were fasting on Wednesday. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Fasting on, 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 on this week. I don't know if it's a bad, bad, if you get the information that you fasting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, we're talking about that. <laughs> Something that's important. That 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 fasting is still a part of our of the salvation right. process. You still can't just you can't just stop fasting and say, well, we, we used to fast when we first got to the church. We don't have to fast no more. Fasting is still a part of it. Nothing has changed regarding that. So we, so listen, you need to find you some time to fast. And sometimes that listen, if, if, if for some reason that you, you can't go. 12, 15, uh, 18, 24 hours. You can't go that many hours. You go as many hours as you can. Go. Right. Put some things aside and during that time. Turn your TV off. Try to get in the presence of the Lord during yeah. that particular time that you can be without food because we need to honor the Lord. We can't just push stuff aside and say we don't need to do it anymore. It's still necessary. So that was the reason I called the fast for us to pray to fast together. The other, the other reason was because of that, our convention was going on. There was some old, uh, I wanted us to be a part of some things that were happening with our convention. 
uh, so we can connect also on, on this Wednesday. Wednesday was our big day of Mary Day. But even Kirk Menace, even Menace and I and, and Minister Curtis, we met in Wyoming, Mississippi on Wednesday morning. And uh, uh, Sister Anna had worked out some days for us uh, that we were able to get some, some valuable equipment and, and some pieces, some things for our church. We got gifts, we got chairs, Amen. we got filing cabinets.
and at some point these grand men are going to come and they're going to assist you. They'll receive whatever offering you have. Yes. I'm being told that this Sunday, this Sunday, is benevolence. We're going to do a benevolence offering for those that will assist us with benevolence. Uh, Dick Winters, if you'll come and assist us with that. Uh, of course, for our benevolence, as you already know, we use that. Oftentimes we use those money for when we need to do some special things that, that are happening or going on. We use those dollars to assist with, with the things that might be going on in our lives. Just kind of help those families and just to say that the church is with you during that particular time. And that's what we do with that, the, that those particular funds. But the general offering, uh, this is what we're receiving right now. This is your general offering. So for those that have an offering, if you go ahead and get your offering, Together, and these gentlemen will come and assist you. Go ahead and, and help them with your offering. Take your
man. Those 
family on our brothers, Felicia and Antoine Collins on our brothers. My mother, Lord Stennis, is on our brothers. Uh, Antoine Sibley is still on our brothers. I continue to pray for Juanita and Justin Tilford, so those individuals are on our brothers. So many others, uh, uh, many ones I may not have called their name, but we continue to have brothers and sisters in prayer. In fact, we will stand with Church. 
Now listen, we need to touch them as soon as we can. That's right. Got to help them get on the right road, at least expose them to some good information as soon as we possibly can. Because the devil is after all of us. And he's not just he's not excluding our youth. He's definitely after our youth. Ah, Lord have mercy. So every every time we turn on the, the television and we're reading Mississippi, we're seeing somebody getting shot. We're seeing we're hearing news about somebody getting killed, and it's often a young person. Just this last week, a young 16-year-old girl ended up killing a, 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 a man, killed, shot. Yeah. You know, all kinds of stuff that's going on, and that's just one person, one little small city. Uh, in Marie, Mississippi, a little small city, but all kinds of stuff is going on. So we need to try to get, in, get our young people in the right direction, get them in the right direction, and get them exposed to the right thing as soon as possible. Uh, Lord have mercy. But we also thank the Lord for Brother Jeremy. Uh, what was that? Silver Sison. 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 Jeremy Sison is here. Brother Jeremy is here. Jeremy, let's eat it.
there was something that he did not do. He did not get so tied to this world. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. He didn't, he, he, he didn't go out and buy him a new house while he was here. In fact, if he needed to do some things, like they got ready to have the Last Supper, he went and borrowed a place. He told the disciples, go and find a man. In fact, when you get to the city town, we're going to town right now. When you get there, you're going to see a man. He's, he's carrying some water. I want you to follow him. Tell him when you get to his house. Tell him that the Lord has need of it. So the Lord didn't choose to tie himself to the house and tie himself to the land. Even when God got ready to travel often time, he, uh, in fact, especially if he was going across the water, sometimes he, if he didn't walk on the water, he would borrow a boat. He didn't own the boat. He That's didn't right. tie himself to that situation. He didn't own those things. Uh, Lord have mercy, even when he got ready to die. That's right. That's uh, right. Rather than going out and, and playing for his plot as to where he's going to be buried when he died. Now, there's nothing wrong with you paying for your plot and know where you're going to be buried when you die. But the Lord didn't pay for his plot. He decided when he got ready to die, he just borrowed him a place. He just borrowed him a place to die in. And to be buried there. Ah, Lord, have mercy. And today, what we find in our lesson is the Lord is again, instead of tying himself to a situation, he says, I want to borrow a coat. I just need to borrow a coat. Ah, the reason why, why, Lord, do you need to borrow this coat? The reason I need to borrow is because something I told Zachariah to write when he years, hundreds of years ago, I told Zachariah to write something in the scripture. And then because that Uriah wrote this down, uh, because I told him, because my word came to him, and he wrote it as I told him, uh, I need to borrow a coat. Uh, Lord have mercy. Listen, my brothers and sisters, uh, I brought that up. The reason I brought this up about being tied to stuff is because oftentimes, sometimes we get so tied up to stuff, so tangled up in stuff, right. sometimes we can't get a loose from Oh, Lord, please help me. Lord, Jesus. I need you to help me, Lord. Lord it, because sometimes God may call on me to leave that stuff. God may call on me to lose that situation, to detach from it. But I can't seem to get away from it because I'm tired of I'm telling you, the Lord wants to use you. But you're all tied up. All I remember a conversation our Lord had. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be long, I promise you. But I just need to say this thing. Brother Mr. Kirk, I need to get this out of my system. Get it out. Man, Lord, have mercy. Yes, yes. The Lord said something in the book of St. John, chapter 21. He spoke to Peter, Simon and Peter, and he told them as they were eating, they were eating dinner. The Lord spoke to Simon Peter and he told him something. He said, Peter, Simon Peter, son of Jesus, do you love me more than these? I tell you, sometimes people are tired to stuff. Uh, that's the reason Jesus questioned him and asked him, do you love me more than this stuff? Uh, and it is my, it is our relationship, it is a relationship yes. Yes. with me more important to you than that stuff. Right. Which one is more important to you? Or your, uh, is, it, what, is it your job? Is it more important to you than God? That's what he's asking the question. That's the reason he began to hold people. It wasn't just talking, he wasn't really just talking to Peter. Every, every time the Lord said something, he knows he, he's not just talking to one, one verse, he's talking to an audience. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord, have mercy because he knows what's going on. So he asked him, he says, Peter, love is thou me more than these. Uh, because what happens oftentimes, I don't know if any of you all, we all come before you like I am. We have planted some things. You, we, we've all planted some stuff. Right. Probably at some point in time we planted some stuff. Well, oftentimes when we plant stuff, what happens, sometimes 
we will grow up right beside the thing that you plant. Right, right. I mean, it'll grow right there by it. In fact, it's hard really sometimes to even tell what, the, what you planted is and what the, the, the grass or the weed that have grown up by it. And, and, and the issue that I'm getting to is if you sometimes, if, in, if you go out, especially when it's young, and try to separate that weed from that which you plant, sometimes it will destroy the plant and the weed. That, 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 that's the issue with sometimes getting attached to stuff okay, right. and making stuff so important to us. Yes, yes. Uh, that, that when God gets ready to separate it, or God asks you to get rid of it or to move away from it. Lord have mercy. It will just about destroy us in the process. I'm telling you one saying that the Lord wants to use you today, my brothers and sisters. But you're all tired. Help, uh, uh, help uh, Jesus. Help. There, help are people, Jesus. there are people that have addictive personality. That's right. There are some that they are addicted to things. They have a personality that's addicted in nature. And, and what that does, it makes them vulnerable. It makes them vulnerable to, to self-destructive behavior. In other words, they know it's bad for them. They know it's killing them. They know it ain't good for them. But they're tied to it. Ah, oh, God, got to help us in this. Rejoice. 
because the king is about to come. He's about to come. And he is going to be riding upon an ass of the Lord, knowing exactly why he was there. Verse 2 says, and, and he said unto them, when Jesus got to the place of Bethany, to where he was going, the Bible said, he said unto them, go. I want you to go. I want you to go. Uh, I hope you're always, I hope you're always in a place to go. That's we're right. always in a place where God says right. go to right. us, that we can go. And we're not stuck in time and stuff, that we can go when he says go. So the Bible says, he says to his disciples, he tells them to go. Go your way into the village. And when as soon as you get into the village, right, you're going to find, you're going to find a coat that's been tied. You're going to find one that has never been sat on. I want you to bring him to me. And wow. then the Bible said this. Wow. And if any man say unto you, why do ye? The Lord said, say ye. I want you to say this. He said, I want you to use these words. I want you to say that the Lord has needed me. Whenever the Lord wants to use us. Yes, Jesus. Ah, Lord have mercy. He will send his word okay. to us. Yes. He will send his word yes. out to us. Yes. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. And whenever we are going on behalf of the Lord to do anything mm. in the name of the Lord, what we are called upon to do is just do what God has told us to do. Just say what God has told us to say. And God is able to do it. Verse 4 says, And when they went that way and found the coat tied and the door was out in a place where two ways met, and they loosed it. They did exactly what the what Lord told them to yes, do. Yes. Uh, they found the coat tied. They found what God wanted to use. They found it all tied up. But what? But they were able to loose the, the, that thing. Why? At the word of God. Word. I'm telling you that yes. God is able to speak yes. in whatever yes. situation that you find yourself tied yes. to. Yes. I don't know what it is today. I don't know what you're dealing with in life. I don't know what's going on in your life that you don't made more important than God. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I'm telling you that God is able to speak to that thing. You may not be able to do anything about it. It may have become an impossible situation for you now. Uh, it may have been something that has totally gotten out of hand. You have no control over it anymore. But I'm telling you that for God, all things are possible. God can do it. And, and he's willing. He's willing to send his word. He's willing to send his word. He's willing to send his word. Oh, uh, Lord, to lose that situation. And the Bible says on verse 5, and certain them that stood there said, what do you loosen the coat? See, everybody can understand. Uh, everybody will understand what's going on in your life. You decide that I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to try to live my life live right. Uh, then you, you decide I'm going to try to live my life holy. I'm trying to be, I'm going to try to get loose from what I've been been bound to. I'm sick and tired of it. It ain't right. I know it ain't right. God ain't pleased with it, and I want to be saved. Everybody will understand when you decide that I want to get myself together. Um, I want I want to be what God is calling on me to be. I want to be in a place where God is calling me. Everybody may not understand it. They're wondering, oh, why are you going to church all the time? Why are you praying all the time? Huh? Why are you doing all of this? It's because God has sent His word, and He's trying to help me. He's trying to deliver me. He's trying to lose me. I'm telling you, my brother, that God wants to use us. Thank you, Jesus. I said he wants to use us. Yes. I said he wants to use us. Us. Yes. Us. That's right. Hallelujah. But we got to get from being tired of stuff. Yes. Yes. We got to be willing to hear the voice of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. So, and, 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 and our response has to be just what the disciples' response was. The Bible said that Jesus told them, when you get there, I want you to say this. Uh -huh. If anybody questions you as to why you're doing what you're doing, I want you to say this. Uh, our response has to be the same response. We have to say the root word of the Lord. Speak God's word. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. Speak His word over our situation, whatever we're going through in life, whatever we're dealing with. In verse 6, my final verse, and he said to them, even as Jesus commanded, and they let them go. They said exactly what Jesus has commanded. They used the Lord's word. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus 
the Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants to use us today. Yes, he but, does. But, 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 but oftentimes we're all tied up. Uh, tied to addiction. We, we tied to can't get it. We tied to can't quit it. We, we, we're tied to can't stop it. We, we're tied to can't let it go. But I'm telling you, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Uh, and God is willing to deal with whatever situation you're dealing with. Whatever you're dealing with in life, you got to be willing to let it go. Let it go. And let God have it way. Uh, forget about what you thought, the way you thought it's supposed to work. Forget it. You just forget your thoughts. And just, just follow whatever the word of the Lord is calling upon you. Whatever God is speaking to you, that's what you need to be. That's what you need to be doing. Following God's word. Following God's word. The Lord wants to use you. But listen to this as I close. God wants to use us, but He wants to use us on His terms. That's right. Uh, he wants to use us on His terms. That's right. We can't do it our way. Uh, I can't have God and have salvation the way I want it. That's right. I can't do it the way I want to do it. And listen, when, the, when when God told them, He told us the disciples. He said, when you go into the city, when you get there, you're going to find a, a coat that's there that's tied up. I want you to lose that. I want you to bring it to me. And if someone says something to you, this is what you ought to say. This is what you ought to say. This is what you ought to do. Oh, uh, Lord, have mercy. He, so when, they, when the disciples got to that the, the place where God told them that they were, were going. They couldn't get there and start saying what they want to say. No. They couldn't get there and start saying, hey, brother, we need to borrow your, 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 your hands. That's not what God told them to do. You have to do it on God's terms. Yeah. He's the one that, that, that tells us how it's going to be done. If he said, except a man be born again, guess what? If he's going to ever get born again. That's the only way it's going to work. I can't do it on my terms. Because, well, we don't really need the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost ain't nothing but a gift. Everybody don't get the gift. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Holy Ghost is necessary. Yes. It's required. You need it. You must have it. It's a part of the salvation experience. You don't have it. You need to be seeking God for it. The Lord, I got to have it. I have found out now that, that I can't do it my way. I got to do it here. Stand with me. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. God bless your name. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. God wants to use you. But you're all tied up. God is trying to lose. He wants to lose some folks. He wants to lose some folks from the situation and the pain that's going on in life. And I'm telling you, there's one person that can do it. And God sends his word to do things. Whenever God gets ready to do something, but he does, he sends his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word with his disciples. He sent his word with the fellow when he get there. This is what he said. Whenever God gets ready to do something, he sends his word. And I'm telling you, that's what God is doing for us. He continues to send his word. He sends his word to us. He's trying to speak to us. He's trying to hopefully get our attention. Said, I want you. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. Uh, I want you to be a part of what I'm doing in these last and evil days. I want you to be a part of it. Yeah. I put something out in you that I want to use. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. God wants to use it. But so often times we're tired of things. We find ourselves wrapped up in a situation so tightly that if 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 this if to be taken away from it, if to take that away from us. It will destroy us in the process. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that's the 
read the borrowed stuff. Let's read the borrowed stuff. You want to use that stuff. Ah, Lord have mercy. God is trying to help us today. He's trying to help you. Amen. Yeah.